for its own Isherbis conjecture, especially strong Isherbis conjecture. And finally, we'll see some kind of equality on <coughs> Hashin Strickman bounds of so called some EMT, some kind of tensor. I'll explain this tensor. Mm. Mm. The, the PD model we consider in this talk is the linear elasticity, which has a uh, uniform loading at the infinity, and we we'll consider in the the whole whole R to D. Here A is symmetric D by D matrix. We call this A as loadings. And the C is the elastic tensor, which is the, we have some kind of inclusion omega in R to D. And the omega has some lambda constant lambda tilde and mu tilde. And the media R to D, lambda constant lambda and mu. Then we can define the elastic tensor like this. Then, in 1957, it shall be observed the following fact. The strain inside ellipses and ellipsoid due to uniform loadings at the infinity is uniform. It is very surprising. It is the picture of level lines of displacement vector, uh, one component of displacement vector. As you can see, there is uh, some perturbation here, even though the, the, the at the infinity it is uniform, but the near the inclusion it is severely perturbed. Even though the the inside the in the ellipsis it is uniform. The this fact is. Uh, some kind of hard to check, but it needs some kind of very tricky calculation. Mm. But mm, you can mm, see. Then it shall be conjectured the, this. He questioned the ellipse or ellipsoid is the only shape inside which the strain is uniform due, due to uniform loadings at the infinity. <coughs> There could be two versions. One version is we consider only a single uniform loading. The second one is we consider every uniform loading. For the weak case, because this, this implies this, so this is the weak version. In the 3D case, it was completely solved by Kang and Milton and you. Yeah, the answer is S, yes. Ellipse or ellipsoid is the only shape the satisfying this property, we call this property as uniformity. So the ellipse or ellipsoid is the, the only simply connected shape satisfying uniformity. But for the strong version, in 2D case, it was proved, proved to be true. But in the 3D, nothing is known. So I'll introduce some recent progress. Let Omega be a simply connected bounded domain with Rift boundary. And we have this condition. We suppose this condition, the strain defined as, <coughs> as this. U is the solution of the, the, the PD. The strain is uniform in Omega for a non-zero symmetric matrix A. And strain has eigenvalues 
because it is symmetric, so it has eigenvalues, which are either all distinct. In this case, the strain is constant multiple of identity, or ah, in this case, the strain is constant multiple of identity, or they are all distinct. In this case, omega is ellipsoid. The why the strong version is true in 2D case. If we consider this condition in the 2D, this condition is always <coughs> satisfied. In the 2D case, the eigenvalues are all distinct or all the same. So the, the strong version in the 2D is true. But in the 3D, they, they might not be this case. I'll briefly sketch of the theorem. Uh, let gamma be the fundamental solution of the linear elasticity, and we define the single layer like this. It is very usual way. It depends on the Rame parameter lambda mu. Then the if if the solution is linear inside omega for some constant matrix B and constant vector V, then we can construct solution like this. We can construct the solution explicitly like this. We can easily check the this is the solution by using the some kind of jump formula or like this. Then then especially by the transmission condition, we have this single layer is equal these linear terms inside omega. Then after the, 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 if you see these single layers, this single layer is defined as the integral over boundary of omega. But if we use the divergence theorem and something like that, then we can convert the, this integral onto the inside of omega. Then we can obtain this, this term. This single layer becomes this term. This term is the, if you see these de definitions, this, the, the, this left-hand side term is just uh, three times differentiation of this phi. Okay. And this is linear. So we prove using this equation. And I should recall some very old theorem. Then uh, these people characterize the ellipsoid as this. Uh, th this is often called Newtonian potential. Then the ellipsoid can be characterized as being the Newtonian potential is quadratic polynomial. This very old result. Now, the eigenvalues the, of the strain inside omega are either all the same or all distinct. So are the those of B star here. B star uh, is this. This is strain. So the, the eigenvalues of strain is all distinct or all the same, then the, so are those of B star. Then we can use some coordinate change 
then we may assume that B star is diagonal, which has diagonal component B1, B2, B3. Then there are two cases. First, first case is the B1, B2, B3 are all the same. In this case, B star is just constant multiple of identity. Then, if you see the, this equality, then this is just, if the B star is just constant multiple of identity, then it becomes this, B alpha minus one gradient of Newtonian potential. So gradient of Newtonian potential is linear, then Newtonian potential is quadratic. So the omega should be ellipsoid. It, it is the easy case. Now, we assumed all eigenvalues of B star are distinct. Then, in this case, the, this, this equation lead as this. Okay? Th this is ju just the component of gradient. Every component is linear. So, we may say the, the alpha bj double omega minus w b star omega is, uh, is independent of x, j up to a quadratic function, right? Because this is linear, so we neglect these linear terms, then the, the, this is just the as some function independent of x, j. Then this is a kind of system of equations. We, we think this om, w omega, w b star omega as two indeterminant. Then we can solve like this. It just serve, and this is the some kind of condition mm, because this is overdetermined. We should satisfy. We we also have these conditions, extra conditions. Mm. Then, if you see these equations, f one is independent of, of x1, f2 is independent of x2, f3 is independent of x3, then it should be of this form. Because you can move this term in, on the right, right hand side and check the, yeah, some if you do some argument, then you can get of this point. Then, if if you this these two equations, if you plug these two two equations into this, then obtain this. But we know that the, the Newtonian potential satisfies the, the Laplacian of Newtonian potential is constant. So if we differentiate these equations, then we get this, then the M, N, R is quadratic functions of x1, x2, x3. So, so, hence the Double, the Newtonian potential is quadratic, thus omega is ellipsoid. The second result is this. Let 
Omega B is simply connected bound domain with Rift's boundary. If the strain tensors for two linearly independent loadings are constant inside omega, then omega is ellipsoid. The weak conjecture, conjecture requires six linearly independent loadings because A is symmetric, so A has six components. So weak Isherbis conjecture requires six linearly independent loadings. The strong Isherbis conjecture requires just one loading. But in our case, we need two loadings. It is the between strong and weak. It is likely the strong Isherbis conjecture may be not true, <laughs> or, or nobody knows <laughs> up to now. Uh, before proving the result, uh, I introduce this lemma. Uh, B1, B2, B2 symmetric matrices, 3 by 3, and if B1 plus T B2 has a const multiple eigenvalue for every T, then B1 and B2 is can be diagonalized by si by the same orthogonal matrix. In other words, these two matrix commute. This lemma uh, looks like apparent intuitively, <laughs> but it was very hard to check this lemma. So. If you know any simple reasoning for this, let me know. I, I, I encountered over a hundred terms calculating this, so <laughs> it was not easy checking this lemma. Maybe, maybe true, but uh, for even for three by three matrices, <laughs> I, I checked over a hundred terms. But if you check m by n, then don't care. Just, just any any multiple I can build. Two or three. Yeah, you know, two or three. Don't care. Maybe two or three, any, any, because we, we are checking for every real number. For some t that might be constant multiple of identity, no, and that is not, not the case. Uh, maybe, maybe the multi multiple listed two. Then now we have two loadings. Then for some linear combinations of two loadings, the 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 strain is the, the eigenvalues of strain has all distinct all distinct, then the the using the theorem A it is done. Right? But what happens if the all the linear combination has multiple eigenvalues? That is the the case we should consider. So we can assume that B one and B two B one star and B two star can be diagonalized simultaneously and we can assume of this form because the B1, B, B, if B1 is equal to C1, then it is okay by the theorem A. So we may assume that B1 
is different from C1 and B2 is different from C2 and B1 and B2 are linearly independent. So we may assume these conditions. Then again we record the, this equality. This equality holds for two matrices. Then we plug in these two matrices into this. Then it is these four equations. By the same reason, it, it, it depends only on x3 and this. Then we subtract the the these equations by this equation, then we get this equality. But then some linear combinations of these two equations, then just the, the, the there comes only the the differentiation of p omega with respect to x three. We can cancel out the differentiation of with, with, with respect to x1 and x2. Then, using these two equations, we can do the same thing to obtain this equality. Then we now see that the, this term depends only on x3. And the same term depends only on x1, x2. So this term is just quadratic. So the if we if we use this equality in this, then we obtain this, this, we obtain this four equality. And the, in the case, the B1 or B, one of, one of B1 and B2 are non-zero. So one of this equality, it has meaning, some meaning. And this, this coefficient, one of this coefficient or this coefficient is non-zero. So one of these is as mean. So combining this four equality, we have this fact. So using the type theorem, we can conclude omega is an ellipsoid. The, there are still some open problems. The strong initial V conjecture is not resolved in any sense. <laughs> the, using our term, it can interpret it as this. Does there exist omega other than ellipsoid satisfying these two equations? For some constant, uh, both are not non-zero. The Liu showed that there exists omega other than ellipsoid satisfying only these equations. Only this equation, but we have also another equations. We don't know there are any shape satisfying these two two equations. Of course the ellipsoid satisfies these this <laughs> two equalities. But and there might be some multiple inclusions. We are just considering simple connected inclusions, but in the multiple multiply connected case there might be some inclusions other than ellipsoid. This question is 
also not answered. And we can also consider the issue of this conjecture for any anisotropic elasticity. The, if we use the conductivity equation instead of elasticity equation, then the, the, all these questions was answered in the conductivity case. But the, in the, these questions are not answered. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I'll introduce some tensor called the elastic moment tensor. The, this tensor depends on some kind of inclusion and Lamy constant uh, defined, given by this. Here A is the loadings. And this is the strain inside omega. If you see this, the we can consider M as the uh, linear operator from the space of symmetric matrices to itself. Here the the elastic constant. Here this is the elastic constant of R to D. Here C one is the elastic constant of omega with lambda constant lambda with tilde. We can, this is the defining equation of elastic moment tensor. Uh, elastic moment tensor arises in various applications. One of them is effective medium theory. If you consider dilute composite material, this small one is the, the, the inclusion. The, if the volume fraction F is very small, then we can calculate the effective elastic tensor like this. Here, the elastic moment tensor comes up. Here, S E is lattice tensor. It depends on the lattice arrangement. It could be not perpendicular. The lattice might be like this. We proved this this equation, and we, we can also check that the if we define lambda one and lambda two like this, then lambda one, lambda two is some kind of projection. Lambda 1 scale is just lambda 1. Lambda 2 scale is just lambda 2. It is some kind of projections. And if, if we project the, the EMT inverse onto this space, then trace is bounded like this. Also, the another component is like bounded like this. And the, 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 the bounded constant is uh, <laughs> maybe so complex, and, but anyway. Then we also know that the ellipsoid, in the ellipsoid, the, the, these equations are satisfied. Then the natural question is, the ellipsoid is the only shape satisfying this? The answer is yes. The, you know, of course, we we are we fix this the volume the, 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 of of the fixed the, of the shape of fixed volume. The, the in the case the ellipsoid is the only shape with satisfying this equality. The, if the this trace is equal to k1, then there, there is a big gap between this. 
But anyway, we can check that the, some strain inside omega is constant, and it has all the same eigenvalues. Maybe there are some big gaps. But anyway, the, the sketch of this proof is like this. And in the second case, the trace is equal to K2, then the strain inside omega is constant for five linearly independent loadings. So the first case is resolved by, by theorem A, and this is solved by theorem